Artificial intelligence, once a vision of the future, but now a growing part of our everyday lives. It's not just dancing robots. From 3D printing to artificial beehives, the potential of new technology is limitless. But while we may think that machines are more efficient than people, new research has thrown up some worrying results, especially when it comes to facial recognition software. Joy Bolamwini has been researching prejudice in tech and her work is on show in this new exhibition at London's Barbican. So this, yes, yeah, so this is the experience I had that kind of started it all. Yeah. I was a grad student at MIT working on a project that used face detection and you saw it work well on my friend's face. When it came to my face, it didn't work so well until I put on... the white mask on. Yes, the white Incredible. mask, right. And so... And it worked perfectly. So here you see different examples yeah. of iconic women yeah. being mislabeled. So this is Serena Williams on the cover of Wired saying the future needs to be more diverse and more inclusive. And then we have Faith Plus Plus Chinese uh, companies labeling her male. And here we have Michelle oh, right. Obama. Joy realized the problem had the potential to cause serious harm. I read another report that showed with self-driving cars, when they tested pedestrian tracking, it was less accurate on darker skinned individuals than lighter skinned individuals. Joy believes this bias is because of the lack of diversity in the data used in teaching AI to make distinctions. As I started looking at the data sets, I learned that for some of the largest data sets that have been very consequential for the field, they were majority men and majority lighter skinned individuals or white individuals. So I call this pale male data. And if you have a lot of pale male data, you're destined to fail the rest of the world, who I call the undersampled majority, people and women of color, because they're not even included. And right now we have to make sure we prioritize inclusion and we prioritize ethics. And people are listening. This week, San Francisco police issued a ban on facial recognition technology in policing. But what is the UK government doing about it? Already, a task force has been set up to advise on best practices and ensure new technologies do not discriminate. This is a, a problem that is going to be with us continually as long as these technologies are, are used. What's fascinating about artificial intelligence is it has the ability to look at patterns and understand our own behaviour. And it can either reflect our behaviour, even exacerbate our behaviour, the worst aspects of our behaviour, but it also has the potential to make, enable us to see our own behaviour, to understand the weaknesses in our own behaviour and to correct it. The crucial thing is that we make the right choices now about how we use this technology and, and, the, and the, the accountability about the way it is used to ensure that it, it, it benefits society and benefits all of us. AI is far from the automatically perfect future. It has to be constantly reviewed and above all, those who construct the algorithms must reflect the qualities of our diverse society. I truly believe that AI has great potential and I think of it like fire, right? Fire can keep our houses warm or it can burn it down if it's not properly managed. And that's where we are with AI. There's great promise, but if we let it ramp it without any kind of controls, we can burn down the city. When I, earlier I spoke to Peter Eckersley, he's Director of Research for the Partnership on AI, a group working to develop fair, inclusive and ethical practices by people in the industry. Their board includes directors from Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Apple. I started by asking him what issues they're dealing with in the United States. Well, one example that we're really struggling with in the United States is that uh, many uh, parts of the US criminal justice system, many counties and states around the US have started using uh, machine learning systems to make predictions about whether uh, criminal defendants will re-offend. Uh, and this is a case where it, it, it's actually very troubling uh, that people are doing this because the data they use is arrest data or conviction data largely. And we know that uh, depending on your race in the United States, you're stopped, searched, arrested, charged, convicted or wrongfully convicted at different rates, depending both on your race and, and the crime and where you are. And so it's actually very hard um, to get appropriate clean data to make a prediction like that. But in a sense, surely, you're trying to perfect um, a, a brilliant piece of tech, which is nevertheless flawed, uh, by extending um, sort of information from all sorts of other forces and bringing them into play. That's not a great piece of tech, is it? 
the problem we're confronted with is that AI systems uh, are something like holding a, a mirror up to uh, the biases and flaws of human beings. Uh, and it's really hard to teach them that there are some things they're seeing in the data that not, are not the future we want to create, but rather flaws in ourselves that we don't want to replicate. Uh, and so that's, that's one giant challenge. But you do have a problem because the general populace thinks crumbs. We've got uh, a brilliant system for identifying criminals or alternatively for picking people for the right job and the rest of it. And we suddenly discover it actually rather seriously flawed. How much is the industry going to spend on trying to make a relatively simple, nevertheless complex tech uh, that, that, that works? Well, I think there is a lot of commitment to tackling these issues with significant uh, technical engineering teams and teams of social scientists and ethicists to start thinking deeply. And, you, 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 know, don't in you, don't mention, you don't mention hiring more black people into tech. Oh, absolutely. I think that, that hiring for diversity is one piece of this uh, pretty long to-do list that I think at least the more, uh, the more responsible artificial intelligence companies are really realizing they have ahead of them.